Hello, I'm Stefan Kruber, in particular for LexD. And last week, I introduced Microsoft, uh, which is a new solution that we built to deploy a Ceph cluster of any sizes extremely easily, um, relying on a snap package and a um, fairly small daemon that we built to manage uh, the cluster and join systems and yeah, really kind of manage all of the details behind the scenes so that all you need to care about is what systems do you want in the cluster and what disks do you want to add to Ceph. That works really well and can be connected to LexD as was shown in that video by manually connecting LexD to it. I also hinted that this was just part of a larger solution that we were working on. And that's what I would like to talk about this week. That solution is called MicroCloud. And MicroCloud is effectively the, currently the combination of both LexD and Microsoft put together to build a microcloud. This will in time grow to also do uh, networking by introducing another component to cluster oven automatically. But right now it's LexD and Ceph that gets you a HA cluster um, that you can use as a microcloud. The way that MicroCloud works is effectively the same as Microsoft. It is another snap that will then talk to both the Microsoft snap and LexD to cluster your systems together. So instead of having to build up a LexD cluster and a Ceph cluster and configure everything together, you just use MicroCloud to detect your systems, cluster them all together, add your disks, and then you've got a working LexD that you can work with. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So here I've got, actually on LexD here, 10 virtual machines. Each of those has three disks, and we can check that real quick. So each machine, uh, each virtual machine has three disks. Each disk is uh, 30 gigs large, and those will be used for Ceph. All of the machines also have two CPUs, four gigs of RAM. Um, this is not actually an ideal configuration for a cluster that size. You'd actually want a fair amount more CPU and RAM in this configuration, uh, but that's where it fits on my, on my machine here. Also in the real world, you can go with a bunch of different sizes. Uh, 10 is just a nice round number that I picked, but you can totally go with just three as your minimum size or potentially go up to 40, 50-ish machine as far as the maximum size goes. Same thing goes for the disks. Uh, you, like In this case, I'm using exactly three disks of 30 gigs on each machine. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, Ceph supports disks of a wide variety of sizes and types all across your cluster, so you can just go with whatever you have, uh, so long as you've got at least three disks across the entire cluster. Anyway, um, let's just pick a completely random system out of that. So, I don't know, six. Go in there and look at what we've got. So there are three snaps that are installed here. Uh, we can see LexD, Microsoft, and MicroCloud. Uh, they are all coming from the stable channels. You can literally just do one snap install with snap install, LexD, Microsoft, MicroCloud, and you get all three of them in one shot. Then once you've got that, you can run MicroCloud in it. This asks for what IP to listen on, and then it will go and scan your network for all of the others. So you don't need to go and interact with any of those other systems. You can just run it on the first one or on any of them, as I did here. And then once they're all listed, you hit enter, and MicroCloud will start doing its magic, which is effectively talking to each of those systems one by one, issuing uh, joint tokens, and bootstrapping itself, Microsoft, and LexD. And the end result of that is after a few seconds or a couple of minutes, given the number of systems I've got here, we're going to end up with a functional LexD, Ceph, uh, and particularly MicroCloud cluster. Once that's done, uh, we'll then be able to add disks. And once the disks are added, we're going to have a functional cloud. So now we're just at the stage of waiting for uh, the LexD and Ceph clusters to, to really assemble themselves. So again, it's effectively sending those uh, joint tokens that we have for both LexD and for Microsoft around behind the scenes to put things in place. On a security uh, standpoint, uh, the initial bootstrap is the risky time because technically we are just trusting those systems and issuing tokens to them. 
once they receive the tokens, everything after that is all authenticated through a TLS scan certificate. So there's no way for anything to impersonate another. You just need to make sure that at the time you actually create the cluster that everything is on the same network and everything is all nice and clean. All right, so the cluster formation stage is done. Now we're gonna be adding disks. What that shows here is a long table of all the disks across all 10 systems. Uh, conveniently, you can just do the right arrow that selects all of them. Just go next, and then it asks which one you want to wipe in case that might be pre-existing data. I have no idea, so I'm just gonna go and wipe them all. Then you hit enter, and it's now gonna be adding them one by one into Ceph. This can take some time, especially because I've got 30 of them. Uh, if you've got the minimum size cluster with just three of them, it's gonna take just a few seconds and it'll be done. Uh, but in this case, it's gonna take a little while longer. While that's going on, let's go see what happened behind the scenes. So if I go into, let's do zero three, so it's another random number. Um, and first we can check Microsoft cluster list. So that shows us a cluster of 10 um, of those. Well, the 10 servers are in the cluster with different roles. Then you can check LXD and we should see the same thing here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can see they're all in there and again with different roles. So in the case of LexD, uh, well, same thing with Microsoft actually. You've got three voters, so they are the main database servers. In one of them is the current elected leader and there are two standbys uh, that are around to take over in case of any, something bad happening. Actually, it looks like Microsoft is configured to have three standbys, um, as we can see here. So we've got three voters are the equivalent of a database for LexD and then three standbys, and the rest are just either clients or spare in this case. You can also see the certificate fingerprint of everything. Um, so that's just the authentication part. And so effectively, we do have the two clusters up and running now, and all that's happening behind the scenes now is the disks are getting added. And we can check that by doing Microsoft.ceph OSD tree, and we'll see that we effectively have the OSDs, so the disks added to cluster 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, and 07, and 6 is currently being filled by the looks of it. So we've got a few more OSDs are coming online now. And once that's all done, then the init stage of MicroCloud will complete by adding the storage pool to LexD, and we'll then have a functional cloud. So just giving that another few more seconds, but it looks of it, we're just it's starting to fill up cluster 09. And then we've got number 10 to do and we'll be done. Okay, so cluster 9 is done, 10 has got first disk added. Got more disks coming up. Come on, one more. There we go. Okay, and if we look at the status instead, we should see 30 OSDs, 30 up, everything is up and running, which means that the microcloud in the process has now completed, it shows microcloud is ready. And that means if we look in LexD, we've got the storage pool that's defined as Ceph. And if we go and launch something, so let's do a 2204 container. It's gonna go ahead, download that uh, container image unpack it onto Ceph and then create an instance from it. Uh, as far as the networking goes, uh, the Ubuntu fan is the go-to networking inside of MicroCloud out of the box. Uh, again, we will be adding Oven in the next few months, but it's not there yet. So until then, the fan is used to give you a cross-machine uh, networking out of the box. So I've got the first one created, and if I create a few more, we're gonna see them spread across the cluster. So second one and do a third one. So that should end up probably on cluster 010203 because next day can I just run Robins the deployment of instances. Yeah, there we go. Oh, actually it went with six, seven, uh, six, seven and nine, sure. Um, and just to show the networking is functional. So if I get a terminal in one of them, I can go and ping another one of them and that works just fine. And that is it, actually. Uh, that was very nice and easy. 
Again, in this case, I only show, I showed it with 10, um, 10 servers, but you can pick any size you want, so long as it's more than three and less than 50. Uh, that's typically the, the size range we're dealing with. And for disks, again, in this case, they're all nice and identical. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, Seth will deal with that just fine uh, with some variants there. I've also been using virtual machines in this case because it makes it so much easier for me to, to like test the environment, throw it away, reset it, and, and, and play with it. Um, but this works just fine on physical hardware. If you've got, I don't know, Intel NUX, you've got some, some spare virtual machine somewhere, you've got some maybe Raspberry Pis, something like that, uh, just make sure that, you know, Seth can be reasonably memory hungry. So you want to have a decent amount of memory. If you're going to be doing that on Raspberry Pis, you should probably use the eight gigs ones uh, just to be on the safe side. But yeah, that's it. You've got a cloud set up pretty much all nice and easy. Uh, there's actually one more mode that I didn't want to show just because it's a bit more boring. Uh, but in the event you don't want to go through the interactive uh, mode, there's actually the option to do dash dash auto dash dash wipe. And this would have done the same thing I did here, which is it would have waited, I believe, about 30 seconds for all of the machines to be detected and then move on with whatever is detected at that stage and then pick every single disk they have and wipe them and add them. So it's a bit dangerous because it will literally penetrate select, select disks that you don't want. So you need to make sure all the systems are, are really fine to be included in the cluster. Uh, but it will let you completely automatically assemble a working micro cloud uh, with LexD and Ceph. So that's also an option uh, that this supports. If you want to play with it yourself, uh, there's going to be a forum post uh, linked down below with some more pointers. Uh, but basically, you just install those three snaps and then you run micro cloud in it. And that's really all there is to it. So. I hope you, you enjoyed that. I hope this will make it so much easier for people to play with LexD clusters. And this will be, uh, uh, I hope, well, we hope that this is also going to be uh, use, well, something interesting to be check over the, the holiday period, which can be a bit slower, or sometimes you might have some, some time to check things out. And we'll definitely be picking things back up in the new year, adding more features to Macro Cloud and also dealing with any kind of uh, early feedback and improvements we can do on this. We're very excited about the, the possibilities of, um, of this solution uh, to really make it so much easier for people to play with, uh, with LexD clusters. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them down below uh, or on the community forum. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.